Hey, Larry Mednick here. Um, so, if you caught our first video on wing tuning uh, the other uh, night, uh, we did the wingtip shims, and uh, we did in fact get a very nice tension that I think uh, everybody that's flown it's been really, really happy with. In fact, uh, Amy said this is one of the best flying uh, rival X wings she's flown on the uh, Revolt. So, I think we just uh, uh, guessed right, and a lot of times wing tuning is a lot of guessing and trial and error and see what you get. So this thing is flying fantastic, I will say, and it's flying perfectly straight. Having said that, here's our roll trim. So if you look, this right roll trim tab is kicked way out, quite a bit, not all the way out. And then if you come over and look at our left trim tab, it's much, much flatter. So I'm gonna flip this on and I'm gonna show you how that works real quick. Um, here's right, and you can see what's happening on each of the trim tabs and back to the left. So, what we know is that we have induced a left turn, which means that without the trim tab system, the trike would actually have a right turn. And so we've been flying it, it's been perfect, but again, the trim tabs are doing a lot of work. And so generally speaking, even though we have the trim tab system, we want to make sure the trim tabs are more or less close to center. That way, if something does change, we can give it a lot of right or a lot of left and we never run out of trim is what I would be concerned about happening if we sent the trike out uh, where we have a lot of uh, left turn induced in it. So what we know is all things being equal without the trim tab system, the right wing wants to drop. Now, a lot of people have, uh, I mean, there's a gazillion different ways to tune a wing, and I've probably, I think I've tried them all over the years. Um, there's wings that uh, respond differently to the same tuning. Uh, in fact, uh, there are uh, quite a few wings where if you add camber to a wing, it'll actually not increase the lift, which you might expect in most wings will, and uh, actually uh, roll the other direction. So you never can quite tell what you're going to get uh, as you start to tune a wing. But uh, I want to talk to you about reflex. Uh, reflex is something I don't see a whole lot of people use or even be aware of. And I think it's one of the very most effective ways to tune a wing. Uh, if you really want to get a turn out, uh, reflex is, uh, it's just very, very effective. Now, before we get there, I want to just touch base on wing tuning as a whole. So, so many times people go into a, a wing tuning project and it uh, could be a brand new wing from the factory, could be an old wing, but the first thing you really want to do before you start tuning a wing is you really want to make sure the wing is symmetrical. That's so important. So one of the first things you need to do is take a look at your battens and make sure that somebody hasn't misshaped a batten or stepped on a batten uh, and that the battens are the same right to left. Better yet, if you have a batten template for your wing, you want to match up and check all of your battens. You want to make sure that your wingtip shims are the same right to left. You want to make sure that your tip twist is the same from right to left. You want to... Uh, make sure that nothing is misrouted. So a lot of times you have your haulback cable, and if your haulback cable is on one side of a king post, of course we don't have a king post, if your haulback uh, were to get hooked, uh, I've seen uh, on one side of the hang block, different hang block designs, um, there's also a keel strap of haulback cable is routed on one side of the haulback, on uh, the keel strap, it can shift things. So you wanna make sure your haulback cable has a nice straight shot back from the cross tubes back to the haulback latch. That's another big one. Now on these double surface wings, I wanna show you, uh, most uh, double surface wings have some kind of internal webbing. Now, not all. If you look at our competition 11 meter wing, it does not use internal webbing. Um, this wing does. So this wing has four different sets of webbings and you can see it here with the double stitch here, the double stitch here, again here and you can't quite see the black on the black there but what that is is it's a bridge from the upper surface to the lower surface and if you can get the camera inside of there you'll see that there is a velcro connection between those two and that's very very common on multiple brand wings is you're going to have um, from the bottom the top and then they're velcroed together 
So if you unvelcro them and open them up, you've opened up the webbing or you've tightened up the webbing. So webbing can be an effective way to take out a turn, but more importantly, it can be an effective way to accidentally put in a turn. So you wanna make sure that your webbing is also equal. That intention is another thing. Now on this wing, we're definitely what I would call old school. And uh, we're one of the last companies that are still using strings. To me, the string is kind of like the shoelace. Um, meaning, we've had all these different uh, mechanisms come out, Velcros in, in the 80s, and at the end of the day, there's nothing wrong with a shoelace, we still use it today. Nothing wrong with a string, we still use it today. But bat and tension, which in this case is gonna be uh, controlled by the tension of the string, is very important. You wanna make sure that you get the batten tension the same all the way across the wing. And then, when you've got everything symmetrical and you've determined that you have a turn in the wing, now it's time to do something asymmetrical. So, if you start to add camber to the wing, you're gonna actually, in my opinion, not want to add camber out in the wingtip area, and I'll tell you why. First of all, the wingtip area is not necessarily generating the most amount of lift uh, because it goes into a negative angle of attack. It's more responsible for the downforce in the wing. It's actually more in this mid-span range that you're getting the most amount of leverage at the most amount of lift in the wing, uh, which would create a, uh, a lifting force. So if you increase the camber, which would increase the Bernoulli effect, you could increase the lift on this uh, right wing, which is what we want to do today. We want to lift the right wing. We want to induce a left turn. So we could add camber. I don't want to add camber out in the tip. That will also decrease the pitch stability. It could actually, if you did too much of it, make the wing divergent. Uh, it'll change the way it rolls. It'll turn left differently than it turns right if you increase the camber just on the wing tip of one wing. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying I avoid doing it because. Um, so if you're gonna add camber, I would like to add it in this mid-span range and furthermore, if you add the camber, if you look at about a third of the way back on the batten, if that lines up with your hang block, you can expect that there won't be any pitching action uh, on the wing. Meaning, if you add camber outside of right about here, you're going to increase your trim speed. And if you add camber inside here, you can expect to decrease your trim speed. So right in this range, we'll have no change on your trim speed if you were to add camber um, to it. So, reflex, uh, and reflex works differently out here than it works in the center of the wing. Because the wing has a keel, and the keel controls the trailing edge quite well at the root, uh, if you were to reflex that area, you're gonna get a completely different effect than reflexing the outside of the wing. Now, why is that? Well, because the outside of the wing rotates. And so what reflex is actually gonna do for you pilots out there that know how an aileron trim tab works, when you put reflex into an airfoil, um, you can read all about that. But when you do it out here, it has an effect that it will actually rotate the wing down and increase the angle of attack on this wingtip area by introducing the reflex. It'll actually rotate the entire uh, section of wing. And that's why it's so, so effective. Now, whether you're adding camber or you're adding reflex, one of the things that you wanna do is you always wanna do it in pairs. Well, why is that? Because if you just do one batten, you could add camber to the moon or reflex to the moon, you're gonna get very little effect on the wing. And here's why. You're just gonna have a little high spot in your wing. But when you do two battens, now you're raising all of the fabric in between those battens with reflex or with camber. So reflex, you typically wanna do the number two, three, and you can do number one, and it's gonna be a small change. So what everybody probably notices about a typical batten, this is a um, stable airfoil family. 
So what you have is high point very early on, and then you have what I call a straight tail. So you can put a straight line on this, and you'll see that there is not a whole lot of curve happening from here to here. And so we're gonna pull out number two, number three. And now coming down, I'm gonna use the trusty knee here. I'm gonna come in approximately 10 inches, and I'm gonna put approximately a two degree reflex in that. Now that right there is probably three. I'm not sure if you can see that. We'll put it down on the ground. Maybe that's two. Now that I'm looking at it on the ground, that looks a little bit better. And then I'm gonna do this one here. Take a look and see what that looks like as well. All right, that's it. This bend right here and right here in this reflex, if you were to take a straight batten now, I'm just gonna pull out the, this batten for comparison. Here's our straight line. And here is what we've done. So not a lot. We've raised the back of this, oh, maybe less than an inch, somewhere in that neighborhood. And uh, again, just because a little of something is working really well, regardless of what you're doing when it comes to wing tuning, you don't want to do more. You know, you lean out a carburetor, you get more horsepower. Just because you get more horsepower doesn't mean just crank it all the way in, you're gonna get even more horsepower. It's kind of like that. So just a little bit of reflex. If the number two and three gives me almost what I'm looking for, but I'm looking for just a little bit more, I'll be more apt to reflex just a little bit, and it's very subtle, the number one, as opposed to just cranking up the number two and three uh, to double that amount of reflex. But if you try reflex out on your two and three, I think you'll be very, very surprised by the effectiveness of what that does. And again, you know, a lot of people would think that, you know, well, you'd want to add camber and that would increase lift. And that's probably true, but adding the reflex will literally change the angle of attack from here. And this reflex will drop it like this and that is going to be the increase in lift that we're going to get. So if you want more uh, uh, to think about, take a look at how a trim tab works on an airplane's elevator or aileron or rudder. It's uh, usually generally opposite of what you might think, uh, how the trim tab will affect what you're going to get from the uh, control surface. So more later. Thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see if this thing flies straight now. So it just literally landed, and I want to point out that uh, that is where our trim tabs wound out, which is about as on the money as you can get. Take a look at the other one. Those are equal. I don't know if the camera shows it real well, but we've got our trim tabs centered now as a result of that little itty bit of reflex that we put in the wing this morning. So that was a total success. Uh, handling remained exactly the same. Um, and it didn't fly any different to me, just that my trim tabs now are symmetrical. Thanks for watching.